So hey everybody, it's Mickey, and in today's video, I thought it would be fun if we just spent a typical day together. I have a bunch of errands to run today. We're going to do a little shopping at Home Goods and Hobby Lobby, and I also have some food prep to do later on, so there will be recipes to share. I'm starting off this morning with one of my favorite breakfasts. I love to make breakfast sandwiches, and today I'm going to be having a spinach and cheese egg sandwich sandwich with a side of carrots. I know it's probably too early to be eating carrots, but you know, they're one of my favorite veggies and I think they go really well with a breakfast sandwich. Before I head out the door this morning, I'm gonna be putting together some crock pot potato soup. I make soup every week, and this potato soup recipe is one of our favorites. It's really simple to make. It uses just diced hash brown potatoes, and it doesn't have any heavy cream in it. A lot of the potato soup recipes that I have found online contain heavy cream, and sometimes that is just not the best for me. So this recipe is very simple to put together. Um, you need your potatoes. You need um, one can of cream of chicken soup. You'll need like two cans of chicken broth or just one of these large containers. You'll need some diced onion. You'll need a bunch of seasonings. I like to use my favorites. I put a lot of pepper in there. Um, garlic powder, a little minced onion. Um, I use some ranch seasoning in there as well. And I also add a little bit of red pepper flakes to give it a little bit of a kick. And then you're going to need a block of Philadelphia cream cheese. Now you're not going to put this in your soup until it's about a half hour before it's done cooking. So you're gonna to wanna to leave this out on your counter so it gets nice and room temperature. So I'm just going to toss all this stuff in the crock pot and then I am heading out the door. So before you get started, you're gonna to wanna to spray your crock pot with some non-stick cooking spray. And then you are going to add your package of diced hash browns. I've had these in my refrigerator overnight and they seem to be pretty well thawed. And you're going to toss in your onions and mix that up so everything is distributed pretty well there. And then we are going to add our can of cream of chicken soup. Now, if you have a big group to feed, this is one of those recipes that really does go a long way because you can put out like all those different bowls of toppings, you know, like bacon and cheese, sour cream. This really makes a great soup for a crowd. So if you double it, you just simply double all of the ingredients. So I have my cream of chicken in there and then we're going to add about let's see 24 ounces of some chicken broth so that's probably about half of this container you can always add more at the end of cooking if you know if you think that the soup is too thick so let's mix that up really well and then we're going to season this. I have some dry ranch seasoning. I'm just going to probably add about a tablespoon to the top here. Some garlic powder. lots of pepper. I don't add salt to this because um, of the chicken stock and the cream of chicken soup. You can really add it at the end if you think it needs a little bit more salt. I'm also going to add some minced onion because I only had about a half of fresh chopped onion in there. Of course, some Mrs. Dash. And then a good sprinkling 
of some red pepper flakes. So I'm gonna mix this up really well. Now I usually start this off on high for an hour, but I'm gonna be out of the house, so I'm just going to set this on low, because I'm not quite sure how long I'm going to be gone today. Um, so when I come home, I might turn it up, depending on you know just how long I've been gone. So we are going to cover this. And set it on low. Since I'm heading out the door this morning, I thought I would share my outfit of the day. It's really rainy here, so I grabbed a denim jacket to go over top because it is really chilly outside. I have on these white jeans that I got from Ann Taylor. If I can find a link, I'll leave it down below for you. I have on my favorite Kelly and Kate espadrilles that I got from DSW. I just love these. I have been wearing them all spring. And then I just have on a red and white top top underneath. I stopped to get myself a cup of tea this morning because it's so chilly outside and then I headed right to Home Goods. Now, I haven't been to Home Goods in a while and I thought this would be a good place to start because I always have trouble decorating the house this time of year. So I thought they might have something different and interesting that I could pick up. I was really surprised to see that they had a few Ray Dunn pieces. I haven't seen anything done in quite a long time. They had such beautiful crystal pieces today, along with some really fun patriotic themed things for the 4th of July. Next stop was Hobby Lobby, and I was so surprised to see the aisles of fall decor here. Now you guys know me, you know how much I love fall, and I would have no problem decorating my house for fall tomorrow, but I do think that it is way too early to be pushing the months ahead. We have not even hit summer yet, but I did enjoy looking at what they had, and of course none of the stuff was on sale quite yet, so I did not pick any fall decor up although I did see a few things that I'm going to add to my list I was there though on a quest today for memory keeping supplies I have a huge photo project that I'm working on and Hobby Lobby had a great sale going on and I'll show you what I got later on in the video So you saw that I ran into Home Goods. I haven't been in Home Goods in a couple months, and I thought, you know, what a better way to go and waste like an hour on a rainy morning than at Home Goods. I am so glad I went in there. I actually have a small Ray Dunn haul for you. Now, I'm not even sure if a Ray Dunn haul is a thing anymore, but you know, I still love my collection. I still have it out, you know, throughout my home. I may not buy as much as I used to, but I really love the collection that I have. I know a lot of people are like liquidating their collection, so you can go to, you know, local thrift stores and things like that and come across some really good pieces. So, when I am out and about, if I head into Home Goods, I always check out to see what they have. And today they had a bunch of things that I had not even seen before. And I'm really glad that I stopped in there. So what I picked up was this large drink pitcher. I always have like lemonade and ice water when we have like, you know, big family dinners. I always have you know, a picture of those things on the table. And I thought this was a really a good size. It's nice and sturdy and heavy. It was $16.99. I had not even seen this um, online or anything before, so I was really surprised. And I love it, the size of it, because, you know, I could even use it 
in the middle of the table to hold, you know, fresh flowers. I can use it as a vase. So I am really happy that I came across this today. Then I found this adorable honey pot. Now I have a couple of the original honey pots that are kind of like in the shape of the beehive. This one is really a nice size. We use honey a lot in the house, you know, for tea. Um, I use it as a sweetener when I bake. So we always have either um, you know a bottle of it or our little honey pots full of it and I like to switch them out a lot you know because they get really sticky so this one is such a nice size it was $9.99 it's lidded it came with one of the little sticks and I just think that it's really adorable so the other thing that I picked up was these adorable butter dishes. Now I have the one from years ago. It's kind of like in a rectangle, but this one I thought was really perfect um, to keep out on your countertop. I always have butter on my countertop. I'm either trying to you know, get it to room temperature to bake, or um, in the mornings, I like to have some soft butter for like muffins and, you know, for bread at dinner and things. So I thought this was such a perfect size for something like this. Now I got two of them because my son's girlfriend loves Ray Dunn. She had never heard, it, heard of it before a couple years ago. And um, anytime I come across something that's, you know, unique or different, I try to pick her one up too. So I got her a little butter dish to add to her growing collection. And like I said, I'm not even sure if Ray Dunn it, hauls are a thing anymore, but this is what I came across today. And I'm really glad that I came across some pieces that I actually wanted to bring home. So I have a really good cake recipe for you, especially if you have some overripe bananas that you don't know what to do with and you just don't wanna make another loaf of banana bread. This recipe is for banana cake and it is such a good recipe. I put a cream cheese frosting on top of it and everybody seems to love it. So what you're going to need for this recipe is just your classic yellow cake mix, any um, brand will do. You're going to need to replace the water in your cake mix with milk, you're going to need a half a cup of oil. I like to always add a little bit of pudding into my box cake mix. I think that it just gives a more um, like denser result in the end and it just tastes so, so good. Uh, we're going to need three eggs. You're going to put um, anywhere from like a half teaspoon to a full teaspoon of cinnamon, add a little bit of clove, a little bit of nutmeg, and I like to add a little bit of baking soda to the mix to help it raise um, even better. You're also going to need three overripe bananas. The, the riper they are, the better. Um, it's usually about three to four bananas depending on the size. So this is what we're going to need for the cake. You're also going to put a cream cheese frosting on top and you will need about a half a stick of butter, um, anywhere from a half to three quarters of a block of cream cheese. You'll also need some powdered sugar, a little bit of vanilla and milk, but I'll show you that whole process when we get to it. You can make this in a layered cake. You can do cupcakes. Today, I'm just going to put it in a nine by 13 pan and I'm going to spray this with non-stick cooking spray. So I have my cake mix and my big mixing bowl and I am going to add my packet of pudding. This is French vanilla. I didn't have any plain vanilla, but this will work out just fine. I'm going to add my cup of milk, my half a cup of oil, and then I am going to add my eggs one at a time. I am one of those people that I put all the ingredients in the mix before I even start to use my hand mixer. You know, they say you're supposed to blend as you go, but I have never had an issue doing it this way. So we have one, two, three, 
three eggs. And then I have in this bowl um, those three bananas all mushed up and I'm just going to add all of this to our mixing bowl. And then I am going to add our extra seasonings. I'm going to add one teaspoon of baking soda. I'm going to add about one teaspoon, maybe a little less of, of cinnamon. Do just like a little pinch of clove. And then I am going to add like a fourth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. And then we are going to mix this all up. So I have sprayed my 9 by 13 pan with um, some non-stick cooking spray and I'm going to transfer our batter into the pan. The addition of the pudding really does thicken up your batter really nicely and I think that's what adds to the density of your cake once it's all baked. I like to smooth out the top of my cakes and then I like to let it sit for a little bit. I give it a little jiggle, hit it on the countertop a couple times and you'll see like little bubbles rising up. And if you do that like maybe one or two times before you stick it in the oven, I think it also helps with the density of your cake. So we are going to bake this in a 350 degree oven um, for about 23 to 28 minutes. I'm probably going to check it around 25 minutes to see if it's done, but we wanna let it bake, of course, until the edges are brown and they kind of pull away from the sides a little bit. So we've come up to the craft room while our cake is baking and I wanted to show you what I picked up at Hobby Lobby. They're having a big sale. There's like 40% off of almost everything. But the reason why I went up there was to get some memory keeping supplies. They were all 40% off. So their scrapbooks, card stock, um, liners, everything was 40% off. And I wanna show you what I picked up. So what I decided to do was while I'm going to be working on updating all of my kids' albums, I am also going to work at the same time on current pictures um, starting uh, 2023 and working backwards. Now for those albums, I am going to be using um, an eight and a half by 11. For my kids' books, I have 12 by 12 um, because you know, like when your kids are smaller and going through school, you take a ton of pictures of every event so you know you have a lot of pictures to work with um, for our current pictures I maybe you know will have maybe you know like six to eight pictures of any event and I think that um, a smaller book will be much easier to manage and much easier to store because these are probably the books that I will have you know out maybe in the family room or in the living room so what I picked up today, 40% off, is two of these paper, the Paper Studio 8.5 by 11 three ring albums. I think they are so beautiful. I really love like the neutral color of like the fabric um, lining of it here. It has a little picture in the middle that I can, you know, maybe pick a picture of all of us together every year to put in there. And I do like that it has a little spot on the side that I can label it. So for these albums, I am going to be using liners that have like four different types of layouts. So on the side here, you can see that some of these liners will be like the full page, the you know, the eight and a half by 11. I can do just a full page layout with photos and page title and all those other things. But then they also have it broken up into different configurations, which will be really great so that I can add, you know, a lot more pictures. I can either cut them down. I can also fill these little spots with you know like journaling and titles and memorabilia all those kinds of things i think that using these types of liners will really facilitate me getting through the hundreds of pictures that i have this was something that i had utilized for um, my son's 
scouting albums. I think I shared those with you, oh my gosh, probably last year sometime. And it really did help because there were so many pictures and badges and certificates and all kinds of things um, with, those, with those albums that these different liners really, really helped me out and allowed me to get through it much quicker than if I was doing a complete full page layout for every page. So I also picked up today um, an assorted 200 sheets of cardstock. Originally this was $22.99, but I got 40% off. And I liked this because it had a full range of colors. It wasn't just like primary or brights or pastels. It has like the full range of colors from like a deep, deep blue, um, you know, to a bright pink and all the way out to like the more neutrals of the grays and the tans. And then I also picked up, I really thought this was pretty. This is a pearl, um, also by the Paper Studio, tw uh, 12 by 12 sheets that I can use as, you know, like just the backgrounds to a lot of the different layouts that I'm going to do. I like that it's neutral. I like that it kind of, you know, matches back to these albums that I'm going to do. So at least it'll have like a theme going through it and, Depending on what layout I do, it'll be, you know, it'll determine the colors that I use on the page. And then I got myself another one of these storage boxes. I have a bunch of these. I think that these are really awesome. They're only like $3, three, four dollars. And what I like these for is it's a place where I can clean up my mess. Because, you know, when you start to do memory keeping, you have little you know, scraps of paper, you have your scissors, you have pictures, you have stickers. And when I go to put it all away, I will have some place to put my current pages in that I'm working on. So that's everything that I picked up from Hobby Lobby today. I'm really excited to get back into memory keeping. I think that it is so important to, you know, leave a legacy for your children. I wish I had something like this from my childhood. My folks really didn't take a lot of pictures and I think it would have been such a nice thing to have. Um, you know, scrapbooks and just my parents' memories of certain events in life and you know, what they were thinking of at the time. And I just think it's really important to leave that legacy for your children. So you guys will have to leave me a comment down below. Let me know if this is something that you want to see more of on my channel because this is something that I am going to be working on pretty consistently and it would be fun to share things. Um, that I'm working on with you guys. So let me know in the comments section down below. Our banana cake is all done. I'm gonna let it cool while I work on the cream cheese frosting. Now, the recipe that I use is really a basic cream cheese frosting recipe. I like to use about three quarters of the block of softened cream cheese, a half a stick of softened butter. I blend those together, and then I like to add just a little bit of vanilla and then I start adding the powdered sugar, probably like at least three cups, just depending on you know what I'm making. Rebecca always says that I just keep making frosting until I run out of powdered sugar. And you know, that's pretty much true. So what I do is I like to add powdered sugar and alternate with a little bit of milk just to get it to the consistency that I want. I think you want something that is smooth, but not too loose or not too stiff. I just add the frosting to the top of the cake in large spoonfuls and then I kind of just swirl it around into a nice pattern just to make it look good. I like to be sure that I bring it all the way to the edges so the whole cake is covered. And then I'm going to add a little bit of cinnamon sugar to the top just to give it a little bit of color and a little bit more of that cinnamon flavor.
I'm telling you, this is one of the best cakes that I make. It has such great banana flavor, and the cream cheese frosting is the perfect accompaniment. I think that it's great to have something like this in your arsenal of cakes that you can make because, you know, we make a lot of vanilla, white, and chocolate cakes, but this is something really different, and it is really, really good. So it's been about three hours or so since I had my potato soup cooking. We're gonna give it a little bit of a stir here. And you're going to want the diced potatoes to start to get a little mushy. So at this point, I think we are ready to add the cream cheese. So I have the cream cheese here that has come to room temperature and I just kind of split it up in little chunks and I'm just going to add these to the crock pot and let them melt and cook for about another 30 minutes. Now I have my crock pot here set on low and I think that is probably going to do it. We're just going to stir these in and allow the cream cheese to kind of do its thing. So it's been about a half hour and the cream cheese is melted pretty well into the soup, but the soup is pretty thick. So I am going to add some chicken stock to this little by little until I get that consistency that I like. I like my soups to be a little bit thicker, but that is just a little too thick even for me. So we're gonna add a little bit more. So our potato soup came out just perfectly. I really love having soup as part of my weekly meal prep. I love having it in the refrigerator so it's there for a quick lunch or an early dinner. It's just something that never goes to waste. So that's gonna do it for me today. Be sure to check the description box down below for links or recipes that I shared in today's video. Join our communities over on Facebook and Instagram at My Bashful Life. And please don't forget to subscribe. I'd love to have you all back as part of our YouTube family. So until I see you in that next video, I hope that you love the life that you have. Be kind to each other, stay safe, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.